how to remember agonist and antagonist pair muscles and the exercises that go with them. So I've sent out an email recently asking which areas do you get a little bit more stuck on in relation to anatomy and physiology. And this question came in from George. So George, this one's for you. He was basically saying that he's doing supersets at the moment with his clients and he is kind of just needing a little bit of fresh information on the opposing muscles. So the agonist, which is the one moving and the antagonist, which is the opposing to that. And he was basically saying that in order to do his supersets effectively, he needs to be aware of these. So I'm just going to do a nice quick one for you all. Um, there are basically six main areas you need to know about. So there's not loads to have to remember. First one I want to talk about, it happens here at the shoulder and the shoulder blade. And that is number one up here. We're talking horizontal flexion and extension of the shoulder. Now that sounds like a mouthful. But hold your arms out so you're in a T-shape. Remember, that's a starting position for uh, where you're in full extension. And then in that T-shape, I just want you to pull your arms forward as if you're clapping your hands together or doing a pec fly. Now, when they're in that forward position, you are doing horizontal flexion of the shoulder. Now, that horizontal flexion of the shoulder happens because your pectoralis major is pulling you forward. So it's your chest muscles. It's pulling that um, the arm forward, it's also pulling the shoulder blades apart. Now that is flexion here. So that's your pectoralis major does that one. Now it doesn't take much for me to uh, ask you which what exercises work pec major. I'm gonna put press ups in, you could put in chest press, you could put in bench press, anything that targets the chest. Okay, then opposite to that is horizontal extension of the shoulder. Now horizontal extension of the shoulder is going to work the opposite. So this is when your arms are going from the position that you can see this man in now and opening them out towards a T shape. And the muscles that are going to work on this, are, there's two. One is the rhomboids and then the second one is the mid traps. So mid trapezius. Now these ones work together to basically close your shoulder blades. So you're going to pull your shoulder blades together which opens up your chest. Therefore it's the opposite to this first one, the flexion. So as that's happening, the perfect exercises for that are going to be things like seated row. So I'm going to go with a seated row machine. Now when I'm doing a superset, I could do these two back to back and I go agonist and then I work the opposing muscle and then the traps become the agonist for the second exercise. One gets a rest, one gets to work. Fantastic little routine. So the way to work through this is to then look at these. What other exercises have pec major in them? And then you can write those down. Which other exercises work rhomboids and mid traps? Write all those down. And then you can pick between the two when you're deciding your superset. So that's my, my big hint for that. Now let's go over to number two over here. Still works around the shoulder, but this time, instead of it being um, going horizontally, so opening and closing of the arms, we're going to go up and down of the arms. So this is where you're starting out, maybe by your hands right by your side, but you're going to lift the arm all the way up towards over the head. Now that is shoulder flexion. So shoulder flexion is lifting your arm up in front all the way up. Um, to over your head and that happens at the shoulder joint so shoulder flexion now an example of this is going to be anything that works the deltoids really so a deltoid is your flexion ex is your your flexion muscle the muscle that flexes your shoulder now that deltoid is gonna I'm gonna put down shoulder press as a good example of that you could also have um, frontal raise you could have lateral raise all of these are shoulder flexion then the opposite to this is extension. So we're going to go from having our arms in the air and we're going to pull our arms down. Now that could be in front, it could be to the side, doesn't matter either way. As long as we are reducing that space really between our arm and our waist. So you're almost like closing it in. Now this basically works our lats. So it's our lats that are responsible for this. So our latissimus dorsi. Now I'm going to give that one a lap pull down. You could have a chin up, a pull up, that type of thing in here. Straight arm pull down, um, anything whereby you're pulling overhead 
and pulling it inwards that that would work as well so these are basically opposing exercises they are opposite exercises cool okay so you can see where we're going with this one next one is the obvious one this is your elbow flexion and extension everybody likes this one they usually use it for their supersets <laughs> in their assessments for level three so for this one it's saying the elbow is flexing and extending now we know that for flexion that's our bicep this is the given isn't it this is the easy one okay so our bicep is flexing uh, our bicep is activating during the flexion of the elbow now and the good exercise for that i'm going to choose bicep curl using a cable and then i'm going to use the extension exercise we know is obviously the muscle associated as a tricep bicep and triceps go together then the exercise I'm going to use for this, I'm going to use skull crushers for that one. There you go. Nice and easy. Okay, right. Let's look at the next one. This one is spinal flexion and extension. So imagine you've got your spine running down through the middle here. Now, spinal flexion and extension is when... So if you're standing up straight... Your back, is, your spine is actually in extension at that point. So flexion is when you like do a sit-up position where you're crunching forwards and you're curling at the spine. So you're flexing your spine forwards. And then obviously it's extension when you bring it back up to standing. It's hyperextension when you take it past that point. Like when a gymnast presents at the end of their, their, their maneuver, they kind of present and they go into hyperextension of the spine. So we're just going to look at flexion extension of the spine. Flexion is going to be our abs. So that's going to be our rectus abdominis. So rectus abdominis. And then an exercise that does that, I'm going to put in a crunch. That's a nice obvious one, I know. But an ab crunch can go in there. Or a reverse crunch, I'm happy with that. But what causes extension of the spine so i could put in here obviously that's going to be our our rectus spinae and these are on the back of our body so if i can spell this right erector spinae now these run either side of our vertebrae and they're responsible for bringing us back up to full extension of the spine and actually in that position they're going to be worked during a back extension they're also worked during a, what else they work during? A good morning. Um, so all of those type of exercises, and that then gives you two opposing exercises for that joint. Final two left to go. Um, we're going to go in with hip flexion versus hip extension. This is probably a real major one that people sometimes get confused on. Really, really important. A lot of people do too much hip flexion in their life. <laughs> so hip flex. this guy here is standing in hip extension to start off with. So he's standing in hip extension. Now, from that position, if he was to lift his knee up or his leg up from here and stick it out level with this arrow, that would be in hip flexion. So the muscle that is responsible for that hip flexion is going to be his hip flexors. And the proper name for that is iliopsoas. So his iliopsoas is working to flex the hip. And what exercise does that? I'm going to say leg raises are a good one for that. So, you know, when you do like a hanging leg raise, something like that. Um, also, a full sit up would work. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a hanging leg raise Um not one I personally favour, but it's a good example for this one. Now, what would be a good one for hip extension? This is, remember, is going to take us, so we're pushing our glute, we're activating our glutes, is our, our muscle that's being worked here. Um, so that's the opposing muscle to the iliopsoas. And we're going to push backwards with the leg. So it's literally pushing backwards this way. Now, hip extension, uh, a good exercise for that, you could have a hip extension machine. You could just do squats because when you're coming back up, you've got a good amount of hip extension. What else would engage the glutes through that? Um, just a rear leg kick. So literally kicking your leg backwards, maybe having a band between your legs. So I'm going to put in a hip extension machine because that's a really easy one for you to understand. But you can, I personally, I favour things like squats for this. It's a little bit more functional. 
Then we've got the final one on here, which is our knee. Now, this is pretty easy for us to get our heads around generally, a bit like the bicep, tricep, pretty easy to understand. Now, this one is knee flexion and extension. So, the muscle that was responsible for knee flexion is, and flexion is obviously the closing up. So, the flexion of our knee is our hamstring. Now, as our hamstring is contracting, then our quad is relaxing. So our quad is responsible for the extension. So our quadriceps, all, all four of them, okay? So that's responsible for extension. Now a good exercise on here, we could go leg curl for hamstring and leg extension for quadriceps. Now, um, the benefit of this little video really was to just show those differences and have them as a little bit of a recap, to be honest. So, the way to work through it is always work from the joint. So find the joint that's moving, work out whether you're doing flexion or extension in the concentric phase. What one is it that you're working? What's the prime mover? And what's the prime mover of that exercise? Then you can work that same joint angle and do the opposing. And then that gives you your system for your supersets as well. But remember the main point here, the whole point of this video is just to show you that difference between the flexion and extension at the joint and then understand all of those in relation to the muscle that's working and the exercise options that you have. So you now have tons of options to go away and do those. And George, I hope that helps and answers your question as well. If anybody else has any other questions, ping them in the little comments below. That would be fantastic. And I will get to making a little video for you. In the meantime, press like and also hit subscribe if you haven't already on our YouTube channel and you'll get many more of these videos. So until next time, good luck for your exam and take care.